What's up, fellas? What we're looking at here is the rocket burner. And in this video, we're gonna see the development process of an oxygen surface mix burner that's gonna be used to melt high melting point alloy metals. I've had a lot of customers contact me trying to accomplish this feat, and it's not an easy thing to do. We're gonna take this crucible of various high melting point metals in here, the highest being the route iron pipe connected to this elbow at 2,900 degrees and we're gonna melt it into this cube right here. This is actually a pyramid. Check that out. We melted the route iron, so we know we hit 2,900 degrees. The charge consists of one piece of high-speed steel, and that has a melting point of 1,430 Celsius. We've got some stainless steel here, which is 1,450 Celsius. That's um, sometimes they, they label it as 2,750 degrees Fahrenheit also, but I'm not so sure about that. 2,650 is cited a lot also. This top piece here is a piece of cast iron coming in at 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit melting point, and that's 1,204 Celsius. And this bottom piece here is route iron. Route iron has a very high melting point of 2,900 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1593 Celsius. Okay, this is not anhydrous borax, so I kind of got to give it a little bit of a melt so it doesn't just blow away in the high velocity flame of the foundry furnace burner. These are some of the most forgiving crucibles I've ever seen. And as a result, we have an opportunity to use something called direct flame impingement. We're not doing the traditional cyclone in this little thing. It's just not worth it. It really isn't. It's a waste of time putting that tangent connector in and everything. When they're this small, I found that it just it doesn't matter. What we have here is an 18 to 20 cubic foot per minute heavily modified air compressor. And we have a primary, secondary, and tertiary water removal setup. We have an oxygen bottle laying on its side here with a regulator. We have fuel gauges, a diesel tank, and we have the foundry furnace with the rocket burner in place. Let's get this show on the road. All right, fellas, let's go for a little walk here. Unfortunately, because my computer sucks, you're gonna miss out on a lot of cool stuff because it just can't handle it. It's maxing out the CPU to 100%, so I'm gonna do what I can here. We've just fired this thing up. And we're going to let it warm up to the maximum temperature or close to the maximum temperature of the Godzilla burner by itself. As you can see here, we're at about 2,462 degrees is the max temp observed there. We are running at about 100, or that was 120 kilowatts there. I'm now going to turn the fuel up to about 240 kilowatts, I believe, is the setting we chose. And then we're going to dump some oxygen in there. And that oxygen is going to allow us to burn that much more fuel inside that tiny little space. And as you can see, the stainless steel rods that were in that crucible are pretty much showering off at this point. I guarantee that's what we're seeing there. Pretty spectacular. The noise of this thing is incredible. It's definitely well named the rocket burner. That's for sure. Um, I don't have any of the close-ups on my phone because the camera just couldn't handle all the data for some reason. I don't know if it's because of the oxygen fire or whatever, but... Okay, I'm shutting it down here now. I can see that the crucible itself is melted, so we got to end it. We're losing crucible fast. We lost about 25% of the height of the crucible. The heat coming off of this thing is so intense that you just can't really be by it. Um, we see a large chunk of debris in the top of the crucible here, which is actually a piece of the foundry furnace ceiling. And um, we did in fact melt everything inside that oh, crucible. Man. So the project was definitely it, a success. We melted the damn crucible. All right, so that big chunk we seen there was a piece of refractory off the ceiling. Look at that, dude! No way! Nuh -uh. <laughs> Guys, 
That is too legit to quit. Check that out. Oh, that is so cool. Let me try to bust this crap off here. I wish I would have took that out of their cold. I'm gonna see if I can bust it free. Let me get some gloves on. Freaking wow, guys. I am just shocked. Shock and all. What? This is a chunk of drill bit, route iron, cast iron, and stainless steel. That's probably the stainless steel iridescence that we're seeing right there. What do you guys think? That is just amazing. It's got this beautiful iridescence to it. Incredible, guys. I can't believe I did this, man. Now remember, never pick one of these up without gloves on because of the angel hair. The top is usually going to be okay because it's been melted, okay? The angel hair typically is not in this area. It's when you lift it out of the furnace that you produce angel hair. Ooh, what was that? You got a bead of metal fell out of there. Something weird. It's very light. This is probably a mate. Look at that. Guys, we were burrowing right through this crucible. This is what it looked like. For a little before and after action. This is a chunk of the ceiling of the furnace that has been completely vitrified on the outside. It was uh, almost going all the way through there. That's impressive, guys. These things are said to have a working temperature of 2,900 degrees. We freaking decimated this thing. Look at that. Fellas, so what's the brass tax? Here it is. We used 450 PSIs to pull that off, which brings us to $11.50. So I would have to say that this is indeed a practical method. You may not even have to bust out an oxygen concentrator as big as a school bus to do this. I was thinking about making a homemade one that you just hook up to another air compressor that's just made out of a couple of large tubes with some special valves. But nonetheless, guys, it looks like you could do this four times off this little bottle of oxygen. You could do four crucibles of metal, which ain't really so bad. This was a $46 bottle of gas, guys, so it ain't the end of the world at all. If we would have done this with waste oil, it would have been free um, fuel, too. So I'm loving this. It's a total success. This is a, absolutely a practical method of melting high-temperature metals and alloys. That's how much fuel we used. See the fuel level there. And that little mark right there is where we started. Man, this thing took a butt kicking bad. Look at that. The whole sidewall started to sag in right there. Look at that angel hair. That stuff will chop your heart off. Definitely got to keep an eye out for that stuff, messing with this. That'll shove into your hand so far, you won't know what to do. I'm talking all the way to the bone, Jack. So, you wary of angel hair. Most of the time, you'll never get hot to make angel hair. When you're making angel hair, you know you're there.